What's going on, movie goers? If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian. Welcome to Zero Productions. Hope you guys are all enjoying you guys this Saturday. I know I am. Finally got a little bit of rest, but you guys, we have some hot reports we have to talk about coming from Daniel RPK and Brad Winderbaum from Marvel Studios. This is too good not to talk about. I'm excited. Let's dive deep into it, you guys. Now, we can all agree that X-Men 97 has set the bar for Marvel animation. I mean... Marvel What If was cool, but X-Men 97 elevated that shit on every single level. Now that's my expectation moving forward. The animation, the story, the character arcs, everything about X-Men 97 is a massive, massive success. And damn near all of Marvel fans loved X-Men 97. And Brandon Winterbaum had come out and he's confirmed that season two is in the editing process. So we can literally get, you know, season two by possibly early next year or even going into mid next year, which is really exciting to me. I mean, Boda Mayo still has his influence on season two and Brad Winderbaum confirmed that they are going to stay true to his vision for season two. And the massive, massive success of X-Men 97, you guys, is fast track season three i just hope they take their time they find the right showrunner for season three and however many seasons they have planned for x-men 97 because how do you top season one like not season one but how do you top this last season like literally how do you top that that is going to be extremely difficult i'm excited to see fresh new faces brand new x-men come in like i want to see my boy Iceman or even snowman i want to see my boy colossus why not it's going to be really exciting man i cannot wait for season two and whatever they have planned in Bo DeMeo, his vision for this next season, because this season was absolutely phenomenal, you guys. It's really exciting. I can't wait. And we still got more, you know, Marvel animation coming our way, like the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, the Eyes of Wakanda series, things of that nature. I just hope that they're as good as X-Men 97, because like I said, now the bar is up here, and I will not, I will not accept anything less, you guys. And as fans, I don't think we should, honestly. But moving on, you guys, Ryan Gosling has come out saying that he wants to play Ghost Rider. He wants to play Johnny Blaze in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And Kevin Feige's already heard about this. They've had conversations about him joining the MCU. We don't know. Ryan Gosling could be casted already as Ghost Rider, as Johnny Blaze. And we don't know, right? It wouldn't be out just yet. But if they can snag, you know, Ryan Gosling as Ghost Rider just in time for the Midnight Suns or even give him his own film... Absolutely. Absolutely. That would be so kick-ass. Look, I enjoyed the Nicolas Cage films. They were a lot of fun at the time. And Ghost Rider is such a freaking awesome character. You got it. You got it. Look, it's got to be mature. It's got to deal with the supernatural elements. It's got to be R-rated. And I just hope that they stay authentic to the character. And I know a lot of fans want to see the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the Ghost Rider, um, Robbie Reyes. But I feel like you got to start off with Johnny Blaze. You got to. You got to. You got to. It's important for the character. And, and I'm just not saying you... Imagine the sequel, Robbie Reyes and Johnny Blaze, like a buddy cop. Oh, absolutely. That would be a freaking awesome move. And I would love to see more, more characters of the supernatural corner of the MCU. I mean, we got a taste of it already, you know, with Agatha, her being a witch or whatever. We got a taste of it in Werewolf by Night. We're going to get a taste of it in Blade. These characters are extremely different. And different is always important moving forward when you're trying to expand your universe and to expand into the supernatural stuff, the R-rated stuff. I can't wait for Blade, you guys. I'm so excited for Blade. I can't, I can't tell you, I can't stress it enough. Blade is one of my most anticipated films. You know, having Mahershala Ali attached to the role as the Daywalker is so, so big. And I'm just hoping that everything turns out to be perfect for Blade. But not only that, you guys, apparently the Midnight Suns project is going to shoot shortly after Blade wraps. And Blade is... Look, Jeff Snyder said that Blade is supposed to start shooting this summer in New Mexico. And then there were reports of Blade you know, shooting later this year. All I know is, if it's going to make that November release date, it has to shoot this summer. I don't think if it shoots in November of this year, it's going to hit that November release date. But who knows? It's a much smaller film now. It's, it's less than $100 million dollars. They scaled it back. They understood the process and the importance of the character. Like, just like, you know, the original Blade film, that, that movie wasn't made for $100 million. And you can tell, and it was still amazing. One of the best Marvel films out there. So just, just because you have a massive big budget doesn't, doesn't honestly, doesn't mean your film's going to be good. Look at Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumanium. Maybe you take a step back, decrease the budget, get more creative, and get better with the script. I think that is a brilliant idea. And they have the writer of Logan on 
you're on the on the script for Blade. So I think Blade is in good hands right now. I'm just hoping that it starts shooting sometime soon so it can hit that release date. So um, the Midnight Suns project can come out on time eventually whenever they, you know, who, I don't even know who have to, uh, who's even attached to direct that. If they, it, realistically, if the Midnight Suns film is going to be shooting shortly after Blade, and if Blade is supposed to start shooting this year, that means a director is already attached. That means a story has already been, you know, plotted out. So I'm excited. I can't wait, man. The Midnight Suns film, absolutely, you guys. It is going to be really, really fun. And, you know, we have some interesting Avengers 5 and Avengers 6 details. Nothing massive, nothing crazy. But Daniel RPK is saying that they are both on target to hit their release date. Now, Avengers 5 is still hitting May 1st, 2026. And then The Secret Wars is still hitting May 7th, 2027. I mean, Marvel Studios has already told their, act their actors that clear some space early next year because that's when they're going to be shooting Avengers 5. And it, honestly, I, I wouldn't put it past them if they shoot both of these films back to back because I feel like you kind of have to. You kind of have to. They're massive films. And we don't. We still don't know who's directing both of these films. I'm really hoping it's one director attached to direct both of these movies because I don't see why you would have two different directors direct these next two Avengers movies. That would make no sense. The Russo brothers directed, you know, <clears throat> Infinity War and Endgame. You know, I can't imagine if the Russo Brothers only directed Infinity War and then Marvel Studios got a brand new director to direct Endgame. You want a cohesive vision. You want a cohesive story moving forward for both films. So it makes all the sense of the world to have one director under your belt for this next Avengers film or both Avengers films. And Spider-Man 4, interesting. Filming is scheduled for this fall, aiming for a release date of 2025. Seems a tad bit too soon, huh? I mean, 2025 is already a stacked out year, you guys. 2025 is already massive. Where are you going to plug in Spider-Man? I mean, Fantastic Four is already, you know, in, in the summer. Blade is at the end of the year. Captain America 4 is at the beginning of the, the year. I don't think Spider-Man 4 hits 2025. Spider-Man 4 definitely hits theaters 2026. I mean, we still don't know the director. But according to Daniel RPK, that reveal is coming soon. The recent reports... Now, I remember about a week ago where, you know, James Wan is attached to direct. I was like, oh, James Wan's good. I like Aquaman, but can he direct a Spider-Man film? I mean, John Watts came out and he was kind of shitting on his own films, you know, talking about how you shouldn't be doing, you know, the, the, the web swinging practical because it looks stupid, it looks silly, things of that nature. And I was like, <clears throat> John Watts, you had the worst web swinging in all three of your movies. Facts, my guy. What are you talking about? All three of your movies had the worst web, se web swinging sequences in your films. So I'm like, what's going on here? Why, like, why, like, why are you backpedaling? Like, I don't know. John Watts is a, he's an interesting character, but I'm not, I'm not shitting on his films. You know, I love, I love, love Homecoming. I thought Homecoming was a great, you know, uh, jump start to this version of Peter Parker. You know, Far From Home is cool. No Way Home is, I, I, honestly, is classic, is iconic with the you know returning characters of Toby and Andrew. But it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be helming and directing this next Spider-Man film. And Daniel RPK did also come out and say that. Yes, the symbiote is going to be attached into this film. And it makes all the sense of the world because it was at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home. He's going to have the black suit on. He is, and it's going to be iconic. They're going to do it right. They're going to do it justice. I'm telling you guys, it is going to look so damn good on Tom Holland. I mean, why not? He is a vulnerable character right now in the MCU. His place in the MCU. He has nobody. Nobody knows his identity anymore. He doesn't have Aunt May. Ben's dead. Tony's dead. Cap is gone. He has nobody. So he is a very vulnerable character. And the symbiote is going to attach itself to that and really make use of those vulnerabilities. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Spider-Man 4. Regardless, I'm still hyped to see my boy Tom Holland return. And to close out the video, you guys, Young Avengers film is set to start filming in 2025. Kate Bishop will make an appearance in both films, that being Avengers 5 and The Young Avengers. Should they be doing a Young Avengers film? No. You already have two Avengers films set. So I don't see where you can fit in a Young Avengers film, honestly. Maybe in the middle. You know what I mean? But I, don't, I, I just don't see it. Like, where do you have time for your Young Avengers film? And honestly, who is excited to see these young core Avengers? They're not going to be... It's Captain America's not going to be on the team. I don't think She-Hulk is going to be on the team. You know what I'm talking about? Like, they're going to be the young... Like, the Miss Marvels, the Kate Bishops, the, you know, the Iron Hearts, things of that nature. That's going to be a hard sell for a young Avengers. Just because you throw Avengers in the title doesn't guarantee it to be a massive success. Maybe you do a Disney Plus special 
But, you know, there's always that what if. Man, what if we did release this movie in theaters? It could have made $300 million, you know, uh, its first two opening weekends. You know what I mean? But let me know what you guys think about that. Do you think a Young Avengers film is needed right now within the MCU? And where do you think they can fit a Young Avengers film over the next two to three years with the, you know, packed out schedule? Post your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. And, of course, thank you guys for taking time into your day for watching Serial Productions. Peace.